Now let's take a look at the four branches of the menu structure. Let's take a look at inputs and outputs. In the inputs section, you have control over the input sensitivity and input gain. Once again, you can select a feature using the enter button and then adjust its setting using the wheel. Sensitivity can be toggled between two networks of sensitivity resistors at plus 4 or plus 14 dBU. You'll notice that the channel you're working on will be displayed in amber in the upper right corner, and its select button will light up the same color. You can change the input channel using the select buttons to make the same adjustments to different channels. The input gain is represented by this bar graph and ranges from negative 100 decibels to 20 decibels. The outputs section gives you access to the signal processing for your output channels. On the PLD, you'll see two options, the source select and speaker processing. Source select is how you configure which inputs are being routed to which outputs. Right now, output C is receiving input 3, and output B is receiving input 2. But you could change that. I could have output B receiving input 1, etc. On the CXD amplifier, the source select is replaced with the mixer, which allows you to dynamically change how much of each input is being routed to each of your outputs. You can select a new channel and mix each one to your liking. You also have the option to select if you'd like to operate in low Z, 70 volt, or 100 volt mode. Moving on to speaker processing, you'll see crossover, parametric EQ, delay, limiter, array correction, and the ability to load and save speaker profiles. Let's select crossover, and you can select a high pass filter, adjust gain or polarity, or a low pass filter. Each of these has several options to it. For instance, with a high pass filter, you can adjust the frequency of the fall off, toggle its type of transition from Linkwitz Riley, Butterworth, or Bessel, as well as the slope of the angle. Whenever you're adjusting a value, your selection is in real time and can only be undone by pressing the exit button, which will revert the parameter to its previous value. If you press enter, the change will be kept. And the home button is a implied confirmation that will also then return you to the home screen. Also, you may have noticed that the highlighted output channel is displayed in blue in the upper right corner, and the select button of that channel is illuminated blue to match it. There are five bands of parametric EQ that you can adjust. Simply select one, change your type, and then you can adjust the gain, frequency, and bandwidth of each of these bands. Selecting delay will allow you to add a digital delay to your signal. Simply change its state from bypass to on, and then adjust the delay by milliseconds. The screen will show you the distance in meters and feet that equates to the delay that you've selected. Next, you can adjust the channel's limiter. For a default or unknown loudspeaker, an automatic limiter will be used, which you can adjust or you can turn off, as well as access some advanced options such as its RMS threshold and peak threshold. For a QSC loudspeaker, all of this information will be updated automatically. If you scroll back to automatic, then you can see that you can adjust the limiter's attack and release time by selecting a mild, medium, or aggressive type, and you can also input the loudspeaker's power rating and impedance. Finally, if you have QSC line arrays loaded as your output speakers, then array correction will let you select the number of boxes in your array and the display angle for it to optimize their performance. If you don't have QSC line arrays loaded, this option will be grayed out and unavailable. Thanks for watching.